What up, players? It's Warboss Tape in this mug. Welcome to part one of how to paint the heavy jacks for the Kador War Machine starter set. And these kind of go over the color scheme that I would use for any heavy jacks in the Kador product line. Most heavy jacks have these large sweeping back plates and leg plates and armor and um, the, the ironwork underneath. And that's why I decided to do two separate war jacks in one video because mostly everything is going to be the same. There's a couple of different details like the separate heads and the separate right arms and the axes or separate left arms rather and the axes on the right hand are slightly different but in general everything is pretty much the same. So here are the colors you're going to be using. Mephiston Red. If you've got the Mephiston Red primer that's great also. Abaddon Black. If you have any bright primer it would be good bright red primer. Lead Belcher, Balthazar Gold, and for the shade we're using Rhinox Hide mixed with Lamian Medium. Alright, so I chose to fast forward a bunch of the video, or time lapse it rather, because uh, there's no real need to see exactly how I'm painting. Like a lot of the stuff for base coats, I figure, is just that the time you take painting them on is not worth really watching it on camera. I think when we get to the, the washes and the highlights, that might need to be a little bit slowed down, but yeah, we're, we're gonna speed through some of that more tedious stuff. What I'm doing is I'm pointing out where these terrible mold lines are. If you see on the leg plates, even after I'd scraped them off, after I primed the model in white, you can really see where those mold lines are. And um, that's the one unfortunate thing. Oh, look at right on the the plate right on the front hanging down at his groin. There's a really bad mold line. Unfortunately, Privateer Press's models, while they look really, really cool, they have uh, they suffer from really terrible mold lines, usually in places that are very difficult. So if you think about the Tau Fire Warrior mold lines where they come right down in the middle of the helmet, these are difficult because they are in hard to reach places where it's difficult to get your brush or your hobby knife in unfortunately. So you're going to need to be either using a Dremel, which uh, I unfortunately don't have, or you're going to need to go in and be very careful with your knife blade and use a very sharp hobby knife. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to spray my models. I know I have an airbrush, but I'm going to uh, use a red primer and uh, I'm also going to hand brush all of the red with my fist on red. Okay, here's where we're going to start speeding it up a little bit. I'm going to be using Abaddon Black and I'm basically going to be painting any of the black areas. They're not, there are not really any areas that need to be black, uh, purely black, except for inside the pipes and uh, down the shoulder, shoulder pads. There's two uh, rims on both sides of the shoulder pads. So basically what I'm doing is I'm putting down a black coat for these metallic paints to go over. So what I do is I put some water and I mix it into the black on my wet palette. Or uh, in this case, since I'm only using black, I don't have to mix it. I just take some fresh water and I put it into the, the lid of the, of the cup. Not too much because you don't want it to affect all of the paint in your pot. But basically, this is a very fast and quick thing that I do is I just put a little bit of water into the lid of the paint pot and mix it in and then you've got some good workable black paint. Usually the black of Abaddon Black is very thick so if I was to paint it straight onto the like his back pipes and before mixing it with water or thinning it down what would happen would be when it dries the the black paint would separate and then you'd see the unpainted surface underneath or the, the paint would pull into itself. If you thin it down with water it spreads it um, it goes into all of the areas you need it to go rather than just covering the top area as a very thick paint it doesn't go into the the recesses unless you really um, get it in there so that's what I do I just water down my black paint usually do that all the time because not only does that help the paint to get into any of the, the areas that are hard to reach with your brush it also provides a very nice natural lining for uh, for your model so it'll, it will put a nice natural looking line in between the surface that's supposed to be black and the surface that's a different color. Now what I'm doing is I'm going down further uh, onto the legs and the hands. 
the fingers are all silver, so there are, we're all gonna we're gonna base the whole thing, all of it there in black. And I'm also painting underneath the top shoulder blade and the lower shoulder blade because if you look at a model from a certain angle and you don't do that, you will see unpainted, unprimed gray plastic underneath, or um, I mean that's the worst. Or you'll just see a lighter coloring of red. And next, I'm painting in the grill of his face and any of the little screw parts or rivet parts that are going to be silver. I'm double checking to see if all the rivets are silver because this guy's got a lot of rivets on him. Right now I'm just going to paint what looks like the obvious rivets that have been pounded in and drilled in. For the axe hand I'm painting the fingers as well as the head of the axe and the um, the handle and the haft and the, the little vent on the back but I am leaving a little part red right in the center. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm showing that both of the models are very similar. The only difference is the cannon arm, really. So uh, I'm showing you how uh, how we paint that up next. I guess before we do that, what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm showing you, I'm going back over with Mephiston Red, all of the red areas. This not only paints over any of the black overpaint that we might have accidentally put on, but it also allows us to smooth and even out that red color. So if you're a little splotchy with your priming or um, you missed some parts, getting a nice even coat of Mephiston Red now, now that you've got the black on, is, is going to help make it easier for you later on. This is just a reminder for those of you who have not seen my videos in a while. I am no longer including the music in the videos. You can click on the link in the description of the video and it'll take you to a separate window where you can be playing my tutorial music in the background for the full War Boss Tay experience. And yeah, we're just painting, tying all the colors together here. These guys, especially the Kador guys, because they are basically in red and silver and gold, very much remind me of the Mechanicum for Warhammer 40k. And in fact, since the Mechanicum releases are, um, I guess, newer, you could almost kind of say that they took a lot of cues from Privateer Press with their Mechanicum figures, especially the bigger Automata. They look very similar with the big sweeping shoulder plates and back plates and armor plates. Okay, what we're doing now is we're taking some lead belcher and we are painting on all of the silver areas. So this is why I slowed down the video because um, you're going to be seeing a lot of hard to reach areas in the back, underneath, and uh, you want to make sure you get the right angles when you paint them or else you are going to probably be getting lots of overspill. Paint colors where they shouldn't be, that kind of thing. I think I thinned down my lead belcher a little bit too much on my on my wet palette. It seems to be um, coming apart there, so I'll do another coat later. We're painting right over all the black areas. Uh, some of them are going to end up being gold, like the handle for this axe. I know it's going to be in gold, so I want to make sure I don't have to paint that. Don't paint over the black there. All right, painting that, the bottom. So the great thing about these models is because they are of a larger scale than your infantry models, you're going to be able to get a lot of good coverage with your with your paint, and it gives you, um, especially if you have shaky hands or uh, a hard time seeing all the details, it will uh, be a lot easier to paint these these pieces. So, I mean that's good. 
they also, of course, obviously they look more impressive being so so much bigger than the regular infantry 20 millimeter size ones or 28 rather so we're just painting on all these details in the lead belcher and uh yeah i decided i started painting these guys with the uh cork handle thing the cork base but i realized that because they're so huge these models are so big the base itself is large enough that i can wrap my fingers around it and um so i decided to just take it off the base and hold it by uh by the base take it off the cork rather and hold it by the base um the reason why i use a base at all if you didn't know is because the smaller figures the Space Marines, Goblins, human infantry size figures that I used to paint, I would paint them in, in assembly line style and then like 20, 30 at a time. So my left hand would be really holding on to this tiny square or round base. And um, it, it was it's not good for your hands, you know? So having a cork base or using a prescription bottle as a base to put your models on is a great way to s save some of that save your hand from some of that tension and pressure which i think in the long run is going to go uh, a very long way to keeping you painting and happy and pain-free for as long as possible so you're going to find the most things to paint, the most details to paint on your war jacks. If you pick your model up and you hold it from different angles, specifically if you're looking down uh, and underneath the model, because a lot of the silver gubbins and workings of the, the war jack are hidden underneath the red protective armor plates. So the inner uh, uh, pipes and, and cogs and all of that stuff is hidden underneath things that you would see naturally if you're looking at a model from where you would, which is in front and from above. In order to get under here, you're going to need to paint like the center section of the uh, right between the legs from underneath like I'm doing. You're going to need to paint the pipes that are connecting the legs from behind because uh, the protective part of the armor is facing the front. And you just want to make sure that you look at your model from every angle and figure out which part you want to paint in in which color of course you could if you want paint everything in red and just when you're weathering it make it look like the armor protective plates are are bright glossy red and the um the the pipes and all of the the gears and cogs are actually not uh painted red but um like oxidized armor and you could do that by by washing it to make it look like orange rust or something else. But I decided uh, the the interesting contrast of looking at these war jacks is seeing a bright candy like color, like this red contrasted with the um, the metallic silver. So for those of you who've been following my work for a little while, you'll notice that I have been doing a slew of War Machine models, specifically the starter set. And that's because I am working on these for a commission from my studio, War Boss Tay Studios, commission painting with War Boss Tay. And um, I'm hopefully going to be wrapping this up soon. I also have a Crix starter box, I think, or starter uh, bundle that I'm, I'm going to be painting as well. And I've also got... Um, a horde of bad moon orcs. I've got uh, Iron Hands, Dreadfleet, some Lord of the Rings models, some more um, Grey Knights and Black Templar Terminators. So there are there's going to be a lot of variety. If if you're not into War Machine like I wasn't for many many years, then uh, please don't worry. I'm uh, not giving up on the 40k. I have lots of 40k coming out. Oh my goodness. That's one of Dookie's toys. It's a monkey that when he shakes it, it makes that monkey noise. If he keeps doing that, I'm going to um, 
I'm going to take it away from him because I thought that was upstairs. I didn't think that would be down here. And uh, I'm hanging out with him right now. And he usually loves shaking that thing until it starts singing for him. <laughs> okay, Balthazar Gold. You might have seen I started painting in the silver rivets there right by the headpiece. For the Balthazar Gold, we're going to be painting the rivets on all of the black banding areas as well as the spikes. Right, I'll be right. I'll be right back. All right, where were we? Ah, uh, the spikes on the shoulder pads. Don't look at me like that, Duke. He wants his monkey toy. Ugh. Um, the spikes on the shoulder pads have, I believe, three different angles. I believe it's three. It could be four. Um, so you're going to need to turn your model into uh, all those different directions to make sure you hit all of the surfaces adequately. I've also painted the rivets right by the head, you can kind of see. And these guys have... I don't remember what, which one is the Juggernaut and which one is the uh, other Heavy War Jack, so I'm just going to kind of talk about them both similarly. Most people who get the starter set are going to be needing to paint these guys up anyway. I think even if you don't have a starter set, what I've been reading about these War Jacks is that they're, they're good to have in your army, so uh, I'm going to just assume that both models are going to need the same pretty similar treatment. Underneath the shoulder pads, you, or actually not on the shoulder pads, but on the axe, you can see that there's that golden grill on both sides. So I'm just painting those with Balthazar gold. And now, like I said, we're going to paint the inside of the handle. Yeah, I think, you know what, no matter what, I think I will paint all of those little rivets in silver when we get to the highlighting phase. I think. There's so many, but they just look so cool. All right, the next thing we're going to paint in gold is the um, tops of the pipes. There's like an inner pipe that we're going to paint in gold. I think naturally it would be the other way. The iron silver would be the uh, the inner pipe and the decorative vent on the outside would be in gold. But in, in this case, we're going to be flipping it around so that the gold is the accent color and the silver is the main color. And uh, I am using a Rosemary and Company brush, fantastic brushes. Cannot talk about them highly enough. I'll be doing a full brush review video uh, in, a, in a little while. But yeah, they are my new brush of choice. Underneath the top armor plate of the shoulder, you've got a second plate underneath that is very similar to the Protectorate of Menoth one where it's got some kind of studs on it. And so I thought in the same vein, we would paint these in, in Balthazar gold just to give a little bit of a, of a variety. And you've got some gold spikes on the power fist, which I'm sure is called something else in War Machine.
I always thought this design was interesting that the the spikes are on the like on the back of the armor. It would seem like you'd want to put the spikes where the joints of the punchy part of his fist are, but maybe maybe he backhands stuff as well. All right, so here is our other guy. And I wanted to show just what the, the difference is for painting his cannon arm. You can see the head is a little bit different too. So I painted the head, the front grille in silver, and then the stripe down the center of the head in silver. But mostly everything else except for the hand is painted, or the cannon arm is painted uh, pretty identically. So for the cannon arm, what we're going to do is we're going to use lead belcher. And everything is going to be painted in lead belcher. We want to leave a little of that black color for the the opening of the cannon arm for the barrel but everything else is going to be in silver and the casing for the giant cannon shells in the magazine those are the only things that are going to be painted a different color and that color is going to be Balthazar gold So very simple. Um, the reason why I'm doing this in, in real time and not speeding it up is because this giant cannon barrel, I found barrels to be deceptively easy. Or would that be deceptively difficult? Deceptively difficult, maybe. Or easy. I, it seems easy, but then I've seen so many cannons where you can tell where the brush strokes are. Some large globs of paint have dried on it and so um, you want to carry the motion over you might have seen me doing it as you're painting the barrel turning it around so that you don't leave any puddles of paint to dry in ugly globs so uh, the back part of the cannon and the front part of the cannon are painted in separate uh, in the silver color the center section I've decided to leave in red most of the artwork and the pictures publicity promotional pictures for this Warjack I've seen have the center section entirely painted in red rather than just the binding with the rivets and then silver on the inside part. So that's fine. We're going to paint the front and the back in silver, leave the center section in red, and like I said, Balthazar Gold is going to go into the center for the shells. So I'm painting from the top and kind of at an angle so that I can make sure I can get a very smooth, consistent line. And don't forget to turn your model upside down because the shells are visible from underneath. And even though 99% of people will not notice this and will never see that, you are going to have that one guy or that one kid at your, at your game store who's going to want to pick up your model and turn it around and look at it and... Uh, so there you go. This is what they look like. Now what we're going to do is I've given the model some time to dry. So you want to, especially with metallic paints, if you get your your wash or your glaze on them while they're still wet, it is going to ruin your entire paint job because then you'll have silver or gold flakes splattered all over the red part of the armor. It's just not good. So what I'm doing is I'm going to mix my Rhinox hide with Lamian medium. And yeah, basically here we go. We're just going to paint it on the entire entirety of the model, the, the, the top red armor plates, the underneath silver, everything is going to get this glaze. And the more Lamian medium you add, the, the better it will be to move the paint around on the figure. The more uh, Rhinox hide you have, the deeper the color is going to be. And you don't really want the color to be that heavy and thick. We're basically creating something that's going to make it look like dried dirt dust, grime, and grease. And on top of that, in part two of the video, we are going to paint over that effect so that we can bring those colors back up. For now, though, we want to make sure we get it everywhere so that um, it leaves a good foundation, a good base of that greasy, grimy effect to build up off of. So I'm going to show you how to do it with this one guy, and then I'm going to go on to Cannon Arm. But basically, you want to just get it everywhere. And having the model in your hand, turning it around, is is a great way to, to do that. So that you can make sure you get 
all this all the angles you also don't want any puddles in your model with glazes and washes having a bunch of them pool together and create a puddle is going to create a problem for you when it dries because you're going to have to cover that color up and uh, a lot of times it's going to you're going to be able to see where that was it just creates a very ugly uh, ugly look to work up off of so the best way just take a larger brush one of your larger brushes and paint uh, spread the glaze out and make sure it doesn't it doesn't pool all right so i'm going to show you how i start off with cannon arm guy and basically for this guy you want to try to keep some of that glaze out of the center of the barrel the black color because you don't want it to muddy up that nice rich black and you also want to make sure that it doesn't pool on the bottom of that barrel or in the cracks where the binding meets the silver and so i'm going to go and finish this guy and i'm going to let them dry you want to make sure you let them dry overnight don't think that uh, just because it looks dry and it's not shiny anymore that it's it's okay to start painting again uh, just give it I would say six to eight hours to completely dry and uh, give you a good base to work off of when you come back for the highlighting the highlighting and the uh, final detail stage is going to be in the next video thank you so much for watching you can go over to warbosstaystudios.com to check out my web page or hit me up on Facebook or Twitter at Warboss Tay. we will see you in the next video Thank you, War Machine players and watchers and painters and everybody else who follows my work for joining me in this part one of how to paint a Kador Heavy Jack.